Welcome everybody to episode 7.3 of Comics Remixed. I'm Junior, aka Wade Wilson. And I'm David Sanchez. Welcome. We have our books in review. All right, we're gonna we gotta kind of speed this up a little bit. Got some things, personal matters we need to take care of, but we're still gonna provide you with the same quality we always do. Uh, make this quick, man. First off, we're gonna start with real quick with the uh, return receipt. This week, Infestation Two Transformers issues one and two, waste of time. You want to see Autobots possessed by uh, some demon, or I'm so, uh, Autobots and Decepticons possessed by a demon. They spend the whole first issue trying to revive Optimus Prime. It takes place in the 1800s, by the way. Oh. 1888. Optimus is a steam engine. Um, the whole first issue is about getting to Optimus and reviving him. Second issue actually revive him. In the pa in the span of about three pages, he goes to the threat. It's like this huge underwater monster. His Arms transform into buzz saws, cuts the monster up, end of story. Wow. So it was a two issue series? Yeah, it was, it's a quick two, two issue thing. Oh. Yeah, see, so they got the checklist on the back of all the infestation tie ins. Well, that's dumb. That's IDW for you. All right. What you got next? Um, as far as return receipt, that was it. I mean, all right, good I'm interview. A good, I'm a good Transformers guy, but no. Oh, but man. Um, we got some positive reviews. Yeah, Batman. And Nightwing number seven. You want to tell them about these? Um, Cause I first thing I love it. They tie in. I love how they tie in. I guess to the point where uh, panel for panel. Yeah. They're both leaning into each other, and that's like old school. That's just beautiful continuity. That's just great writing and just uh, great team working on there all together. Um, spoiler alert here. Um, before anything, I did review Nightwing seven on our page on our Facebook page. So if you already read the review, there should be no spoiler. If not, I'm sorry. You're about to hear it. Um, it is revealed that the assassin Batman has been fighting, Talon, is the great great grandfather of Nightwing, Dick Grayson. That's weird. Turns out Nightwing was supposed to be an assassin for the for the Court of Owls, but Batman actually adopted Dick Grayson before they can get their claws into him. So now you got psychological warfare on Batman. Yep. Yep. Really good. You reads. know, now does he think that Dick Grayson's out to get him too? It's getting very dramatic. Very, very. Plus Schneider on Batman. Really working out. Really and like what he's doing there. Since you said Scott Snyder, Severed, seven issue miniseries he's published for uh, Image Comics. Great horror story. Um, it's It scares you to the point because you don't really see the evil that's there. It's more in the dialogue and it's more in the story that's, and the way it's presented to you. It's the way that it scares you and creeps up on you more. It's that creepy kind of scary, not the gory scary. Um, the main monster villain of the story is a cannibal. Um, he's eating kids alive. But it's, the way it plays in. Yeah, the way it plays in is just really, really creepy. How dramatic every, it is. Every kid that he eats, he ends up tattooing something about them to his body as a reminder. It's a really, really creepy story. If you can find all seven issues, we have, uh, we believe, we have all seven here at Dreamland Comics. But, uh, the hardcover will actually be out next month, which we will also have in stock. Scott Snyder's just on a great roll right now. Yeah, I don't think he can do any Good more. transition to Batman. Very, very good. Very good. All right. Next AVX up. number zero. Half of this book is good. The Scarlet Witch half. Yeah, the Bendis half is really, good. Was it really Bendis that wrote that part? Yeah, or was it that's, Jason that's Bendis and Joe. Uh, Aaron did the uh, the Cyclops and Hope part. Gotcha. What's, that guy mentioned in our episode before is like they just keep writing Cyclops stupider. Which is, and that's a which word. Is stupid. <laughs> it is. Robert it's Kirkman used it in Walking Dead. So there you it's go. a word. Yeah. So half of this book is great. So thumbs up or thumbs down? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what Zongi, about baby. Okay. Real quick, Batman Nightwing. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up. Always. There you go. Always been a great Nightwing fan. The fact that Junior liked a Nightwing I, I, I like book. Nightwing as a character. Never enough this to book give it a time like of day, this. though. Yeah. I, so it's just, that alone says a lot. Uh, I'm loving the Batman revival thing, how, how Schneider's playing them out. What do you got? Severed, thumbs up. This was on return receipt, thumbs down. Yeah, you were saying some very interesting stuff right there about Sensational. What the hell, what's Sensational? <laughs> the, uh, Avenging Spider-Man. Avenging Spider-Man number five. That just goes to show how old school I am about Sensational Spider-Man. Uh, I recently reviewed issue four on our episode. I don't remember if it was episode five or six. Can't remember, but it was the one with Hawkeye being, you know, just a human and everything. I have no qualms with this book. 
My problem with it, the story is great. The art, Lenny Francis, you did a great job on the art. The thing I don't like about it is the fact that every scene that has Spider-Man unmasked has him look exactly like the actor who is going to portray him in the new movie coming up. And I think it's a if they're just kind of forcing it down your throat, like you said earlier, you know, just cramming yeah, it. Yeah, uh, it's it's all marketing. I mean, the, they <clears throat> they want they want people to accept visually visually that this is Spider Man. Yeah, it's like they drew him like that on purpose. You know, you couldn't draw Peter in street clothes. They had to draw him without a mask in the Spider Man outfit while he's at home in Avengers Mansion. Why? Because they're trying to force it down your throats. That's my only concern with the book. Like I said, the story's good. It's a human yeah. cap one on one. Shows the hu a more human side of Cap and what he was like before the war, before all the fighting, before the super soldier serum. Um, I wouldn't give it a thumbs down, but I'm not gonna. I have to do one of these. I have to give it a zangief. Yeah. Uh, lastly, a book by Angelo Totero and Richard Jordan. New one from Image. This is one of those like we go back to the last episode talking about the sellouts and everything. No Place Like Home, number one and number two. Number one is, is sold out. They're, this is the second printing I'm holding here. Um, it furthers the story of Oz. It's got, uh, mm. I forgot the main chick's name, but she comes back to uh, her hometown to bury her parents. Her parents were involved in a tornado accident in the 50s. Ring a bell? Uh, tornado in the 50s. Kansas, Wizard of Oz. Oh, really? Yeah, so there's something going on. Her parents were murdered. The only one that really knows the truth and is trying to get everybody to believe him about Oz. is the town drunk. So nobody believes him, obviously. Who's that's going to turn out to be the whiz? Who knows? I bet. But uh, he was there along with the, the town sheriff, um, the main chick's parents, who for some reason, I can't remember her damn name. Give me one second. I know it's here. Uh... D. Why did I remember? Her name's D. D E E. Um, like I said, she came back to the small town to bury her parents. Uh, unfortunately, they died. How she, how they died? She was told one thing. At the end of issue two, she finds out their throats were ripped out. If you've been reading the two issues, you see that the winged monkey from the Wizard of Oz is not all nice and cuddly as they made him out to be. He's that she. He as he should be. Yeah, damn it. A um, ribbon bastard. So if Wizard of Oz ever tickled your fancy, and you always wanted to exp like expand the story, no place like home is the place to do it. Image Comics, thumbs up. Cool. I'm interested. Thumbs up. So, all right. Um, that's good. More good reads than bad. Yeah, I like that. I like this format actually. As instead of doing the whole return receipt and. The, you know, the spot, the send-off. That's important, you know. You have a lot of subscribers. They got to know what they're getting into. Yeah, I think I think we should do it this way every week. Yeah. I think we should just pick a couple books that tickle their fancy. Thumbs up, thumbs down. That's it. Or a Zangief. E. So, um, that's a good way to close out the show. I mean, all right. We hit all three angles without having them, you know, by segment. I mean, the segments are still there. Just to tease everybody with AVX Zero... I already read issue one, so I know who threw the first punch, so to speak. You guys are going to love it. It's on sale this coming Tuesday, April 3rd. And I had to say, even that was stupid. April 3rd, <laughs> here at Dreamland Comics, starting at 7.30 p.m., we will be selling Avengers vs. X-Men number one. Come in, get your copy, get some free buttons, free lithographs. We'll have, buttons, yo! We'll have pizza. Um, soda, it's a little get-together. You guys come in. 1415 West Schaumburg Road, Schaumburg, Illinois, obviously. Uh, for more information, visit dreamlandcomics.com. You're going to be here all day? I will be here all day from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. when we close the store. We're closing for half an hour in order to get everything ready. And then we open again at 7.30, and we'll be open till about 9. I might stop by. Hang out with you. So, Steal some stuff. <laughs> um, I will use his discount <laughs> No, you can't use my discount Okay, fine um, So we'll be here Shut up, man, you got me all <laughs> distracted now <laughs> Anyways, I'll be here Tuesday So come in, get your copy of Avengers vs. X-Men number one um, It's a good read, great build-up 
and I said I said it before I'll say it again it's been a while since I can say I'm looking forward to the next issue of something Avengers X-Men 2 I'm looking forward to I'd like to see where it goes um, with that said we'll also be at C2E2 in two weeks press baby that's what's up that's right we'll be running press passes yo. we'll be trying to run up on your favorite creators getting the scoop asking some ra random questions hopefully we don't get arrested um We'll be interviewing vendors. I think that's I mean, why we should walk around with a six pack of beer as a safety. Hey, can we interview? Beer. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's uh like I said, c 2 e2.com for more information. Dreamlandcomics.com for all your orders. Save up to thirty five percent on new comics and thirty eight percent on graphic novels. There you go. So all right. for uh this week's episode, Comics Remix seven point three, Junior aka Wade Wilson. And David Sanchez. We will be back next time with a uh, special episode dedicated to convention. Yeah. Or comic conventions. Yeah, that sounded weird. Right. But we'll be back with a episode dedicated to comic conventions. Our stories, our experiences, and our tips for you knowing that uh, if you've never been, what to look for, what not to look for. So we'll All see right. you guys next time. You guys have a great night. Happy reading. Bye-bye.